The Colonel Podcast. Hosted by Noah Norton. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Colonel News Podcast. Uh, as you can see, I survived the revolution. A lot of our staff did. Unfortunately, most of our ex- executives were, in fact, killed and murdered by the uh, makeshift guillotine. Um, but you know what? Things have been kind of okay around the office. Like, oh, thank you so much, Bernice. I love it. Hmm. Is this just tap? <laughs> I tell you, since the executive is gone, everything's been so much better around this office. I mean, everyone's making a livable wage. Uh, the, the, they're not like sapping up our money anymore, making millions while we are left in the dust. It's been fantastic since we killed them. I actually feel happier. My skin's clear. I don't know if it come, comes through on the camera, but I haven't smiled this much in a while. Everyone's just having a great time in the office. I, I don't understand why more companies don't do this. You're not sapping up all that money. Those are CEOs who are making millions while everyone else is you know, making dirt. I don't know why they don't, don't, don't do this more often. This is a really great way to live. I'm, I'm working a 40-hour week, but I'm only working Monday through Thursday. Do you know what it's like to have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off every single week? My God, I come back to work so uh, rejuvenated. I get to see it. what I would imagine for people a family. For me, it's more just I, I watch Tenet, but that's so much more Tenet time, you know? So it's really great. Um, yeah, everything's great in the colonel office. And thank God they didn't guillotine me. They kind of realize, you know, keep the face, right? Um, okay, so moving on, let's get into the news. So this is some news to catch you up. So let's pop it, lock it, and butter it down, all right? Starting out here, Golden Globes Fallout. Now, as we know, Christopher God King Nolan has placed or had placed a, a Latin curse on the Golden Globes since he wasn't going to be winning one since Tenet was stupidly not nominated and he wasn't nominated for best. Or just whole crap. And as his prophecy foretold, and the, the curse did take hold and killed many of the pretentious stars and celebrities who won a Golden Globe. Um, I'm happy about a lot of it. I think a lot of them deserved it, but I do got to say, Sasha Barra Cohen um, and your family and your beautiful wife, Isla Fisher, my thoughts are with your family right now. Rest in peace. Uh, He thought he could kind of uh, evade the curse by doing like a Borat, like, oh, I'm Borat, this is not Sasha. But of course, still Sasha and the curse recognized that. Um, I I think his disintegration was probably the hardest. It was very difficult to watch that. So, uh, sorry, Sasha and your family. Um, but I will say after all these celebrities got killed, I, I got a lot of phone calls. I got a lot of phone calls. They were offering me roles and directing gigs. And I, I was, I was so flustered with all this stuff, but unfortunately to any studio that's trying to contact me, my contract with the Colonel does, uh, prohibit me from taking any, any roles or sort of positions outside of the company. So sorry, <laughs> there's no way, no way we could work around that. No way. Ah, oh, Okay. What you gonna do, right? <laughs> you sign a contract in blood, it's it's blood is for life. Moving on. King Bach will replace T.I. in Ant-Man 3. Uh, since he's already working with Disney for his film adaptation of the comically large spoon, this just makes sense. This is a change that it, it really just makes sense. To me, T.I.'s character, uh, Dave, was not only essential to the Ant-Man franchise, but to the Marvel Cinematic Universe as a whole. And I mean, this has been confirmed multiple times with Kevin Feige coming out and saying that uh, the plans for phases seven and eight of the MCU totally revolve around the character, um, and that he's a, he's uh, the epicenter of many of the events that happen. So, uh, King Bach, very excited to see what you bring to the table. Please keep this the 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 uh, vein of the spirit alive of, of Dave. You know, keep that character that we have grown to love, and don't let us down, man. Dave is <laughs> he's a top five character, top five character. Now that Captain America is kind of, I think you got to put Dave in the top five. You know, if not fourth. Third, second, first? I don't know. You leave your rankings of uh, Dave at the bottom, but um, excited to see what happens. All right, moving on here. Ari Aster is now confirmed to be the next M. Night Shyamalan. I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, no, what the heck? What does that even mean? Well, Ari Aster's career is actually going to follow identically to what M. Night Shyamalan's career is. You're saying, no, how the heck do you know that? This is exciting news. I actually have been inducted into the Hollywood elite secret society. So I'm 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 a member of that society now. So I actually know the life path and career for many of these uh, great directors. Now I won't spoil many of them. I just feel like it's important being an A24 fan to be transparent that Ari Aster's uh, subsequent films are going to be lower, not necessarily in quality, but in reviews. I met a lot of critics who are already paid off by Disney and Rotten Tomatoes. I didn't know you could do this on Rotten Tomatoes, but apparently for critics, if you if you accept Disney money, they just give you like this spreadsheet and you just kind of uh, upload the reviews that Disney thinks or wants you to put in those things you know so they 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 uploaded them and then when the movie releases 
that way you don't have to like actually watch the movie and do a review for it or write up anything. So it's just kind of like a prefix thing that they send out to everybody. Um, and it was at these uh, Hollywood sex parties. Uh, I was talking to Tom Holland, um, who, by the way, we, uh, we 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 talk things out and everything's cool, you know. Um, he didn't mind me revealing the penis secret. I think that's, you know, some people ask if that's a problem, but you know, it's just, it's how it is, you know? And it, it, if you're wondering, yes, it is, it is small, you know, it was, it was a little bigger than mine, but it's not like, well, I mean, it, that's not important. Well, we won't go into that, but, but it was, um, it was a great Hollywood sex party. Uh, I know a lot of you are probably wondering what they're like. Um, think eyes wide shut. With a little bit of uh, Mad Max Fury Road in there. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, M. Night Shyamalan and Ari Aster, those are going to become like kind of syn synonymous names soon. Um, I'm sorry for Ari Aster. They're even going to give him... This is how crazy they are, intense, about like replicating M. Night Shyamalan's career. They're actually going to give him a beloved animated franchise and have him try to do a live-action version of it. And, and the rumor right now is Pokemon. They, they're, they're actually saying they're going to give him Pokemon and then Ari Aster is going to do a movie and they're going to flop and hate it and all that stuff. So, And they're going to give it to Paramount or something like that. It's very interesting. Um, oh, also, on the on the, on the the topic of Hollywood sex parties, uh, there, there was someone in the party, uh, they were wearing a a, a golden uh, doe mask, like a, like a female deer doe, not like bread stuff, like a golden uh, female deer. And in, 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 I think they took my jacket. Uh, it was gray. It had a Warner Brothers logo on it. Uh, at the next Hollywood sex party this this Wednesday, um, can you just bring it? No questions asked. No reason why you took it. Maybe it was cold. I mean, I know I was I was shivering. It was pretty intense there. I'll be with the silver ocelot mask. So when you see the silver ocelot, just give it to it. No questions asked. Okay. There wasn't anything in the pocket, so don't worry about that. Okay. But um, Ari Aster, Oof, tough break, bro. And finally, here Robert Downey Jr is now denying being in Doolittle 2020. Uh, he swears the performance was a deep fake, and he actually has gone so far as to claim that since the snap at the end of Endgame, he's actually been off the grid in Alaska ice fishing. Uh, apparently, he said he just arrived back in town, heard about this Doolittle film that did poorly, and is now suing the producers, claiming that they used his likeness to market the film. The only issue here, Robert... Is you're a producer on this film. I Are we buying this? I don't think anyone's buying it, Robert. We knew that was you in the movie. You pulled the bagpipe out of the dragon's ass. You read that in a script, and you said, this is a good idea. I don't know what... The, what, what is he trying to pull here? This is silly. Robert, it's ridiculous. Uh, look, Robert. Bobby. Your friends call him Bobby. If you don't know, Bobby. Go back to Marvel. Okay. They've gone to hell without you. You've gone to hell without them. Meet in the middle. Let's start making Iron Man 4. All right, suit up. Head back in the fight here. Isn't that crazy? Anyways, we're, uh, we're going to take a quick break here. We'll be back with quick reviews in a moment. Don't go anywhere. Hey, everyone. I, I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. We just actually want to take this break for a second uh, to show you about some exciting stuff. Now, you may have been watching the episode and noticed this pin right here. And the pin says, I risked my life for Tenant. And when I got this pin from redbubble.com, which is actually where you can find all of our merch, um, this right here is a kind of like signed contract, a sort of a, a statement right here that I risked my life during the middle of a global pandemic to see a masterpiece film. And I actually did that multiple times. And I think something at the kernel we've been talking about is since we're all such huge fans that this is a kind of a badge of honor a badge of courage if you will so we're actually selling these uh on redbubble um these i risked my life for tenant pins you can get them as stickers like this a more a larger sticker you put kind of on a laptop screen maybe you put it in the corner of your screen so when you're watching tenant for your what 17th time uh you get a reminder that you actually braved the perils of the world to see this film and promote really high quality filmmaking so if you want to uh get these check them out at redbubble.com we actually have a bunch of great uh merch over there uh we also have uh this great uh sticker written and directed by quintifer nolentino uh this is if you want to flex on some film fans and let them know that you're you're a fan of great writing and film and you're also a fan of great writing and great directing in film so kind of uh, uh to show that you really appreciate true cinema we also have this great one right here that i think is awesome i think this is this is uh, uh it's god king nolan but i think this is during while he's filming the prestige if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, it's just, yeah, this is the prestige Nolan right here. So you can wear this and just kind of show your your support of a really true visionary that Christopher Nolan is. And then finally, we have just a standard, the Colonel News kind of sticker you can put 
um, on like a laptop screen. And this right here actually works in film debates as sort of a get out of jail free for a bad take. Uh, if you feel like you have something controversial, you just take this sticker off, you show it to someone, and they know. You know, that it, it's kind of just, hey, don't debate me, all right? Don't try to fight me on this. I'm going to beat you. Uh, I do want to make it clear, if you, if you do end up purchasing the I Risk My Life for Tenet sticker, you have to have seen Tenet in theaters. This is a club that we want exclusivity for. Uh, we want it to be a, 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 a badge of courage. You wouldn't you wouldn't wear a purple heart, you know, just because you fought in the war, right? You, you want this to mean something. So please only buy the Iris for My Life for Tenant if you truly did see Tenant in theaters, you know? And I hope you enjoy the rest of the show. All right, welcome back, everyone. Now we're going to get into our quick review section here. So this quick review section, uh, this is kind of like talking about some of the things that I've seen or maybe you've seen and want to talk about, kind of get my thoughts and feelings out there. Uh, so we're going to do our quick reviews, kind of talk about them, and just like, you know, give you, maybe you, after this you'll think of uh, something you want to see or watch, or maybe I'll give you a review and you'll be like, oh, ooh, I, I, I should check that out, or oh, I know I should not check that out. So I'll save you some time and give you some quick reviews. So uh, starting off first, WandaVision Season 1, Episodes 8 through 9, in including the finale. Wow. Wow. Wasn't that a surprise ending? My goodness. Oh, my God. I won't say much about it because of, you know, spoilers. But that guest appearance was so creative and brilliant. I didn't see it coming at all. So good, Marvel. You did it again. You stuck the landing. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Get, get, cut the fucking camera. <laughs> I mean, cut the camera. What the fuck are they doing? Jesus fucking Christ. Am I done jerking off Marvel? Am I, am I fucking done doing that? Seriously, dude. It's fucking insane, man. Oh, my God. You know what the worst part? Get in this. You know what the worst part is? They think fucking Easter eggs are a story. They, they think, oh, hey, remember Thor 2? Rem remember fucking remember fucking uh, uh Ant Man two. You love Jimmy. You love Jimmy, right? Remember Captain Marvel's friend's daughter who told her red, white, and blue is a fucking color scheme. Stupid. That's the dumbest shit, dude. Man, it doesn't make any sense. And think about the story. What that means, you know? Oh, oh, now Wanda can fucking manipulate matter and some shit that she can just like, like imagine the next villain fight. Like, Thanos shows up somehow. He's just like, oh, I'm going to... Boom. She just snaps her fingers. He's gone. Like, how is that? It's not compelling. There's nothing interesting about that. Ugh. You know the best thing that happened out of this whole thing? Best thing that happened out of the whole thing? Thanks, man. Is, uh... Is... Fuck. Here, let me take it. I got it. Uh, best thing that happened, the whole fucking thing? We found out how hot Catherine Hahn is. Oh, my God. Am I crazy? Would you? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally, right? It was Agatha. It was Agatha on my schlong, right? <laughs> Seriously. Why's the, why's the camera still going? Oh, shit. Yeah, get, turn the fucking... It's, it's doing the blinking fucking shit. Get that off. Fucking turn it off. Turn it off. Uh, moving on here. Chaos Walking 2021. Daisy Ridley. I mean, with platinum blonde hair. She's making me act a fool. She's making me act a fool a little bit. I'm getting a little flustered thinking about it. It's a 10 out of 10 film. I didn't even hear any dialogue. So much blood was rushing through my head when I saw that beautiful, beautiful woman on screen. My God. I Oh, my. I want to court her. I want to take, hey, at the next Hollywood elite party, Daisy, look for me. I will be in the silver ocelot mask next to the mini corn dogs. And we will have a beautiful Hollywood Secret Society sex party, Daisy. <laughs> Silver Ocelot mask. Don't be late. Keep the hair. I won't be able to see it behind the mask, but that doesn't matter. I'll just know it's there. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so hot. Uh, okay. Uh, I know that there's a lot of hate out there, you know, because some people have some mixed feelings about the, the sequel series. But I think... If there's one unifying thing that Star Wars fans and cinema fans and just everyone in between can agree on, she is a dime piece. Daisy Ridley is a 10 out of 10 dime piece. 9 out of 10 when she's got the brown hair. 10 out of 10 when she's got that platinum bond. All right. Tom Holland, were you in this movie? I don't I don't know. I was I was looking at Daisy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so good. <laughs> okay, moving on here. Cherry 2021 review. 
Okay, so we got a screener for this one. Um, we're gaining some legitimacy. You know, ever since the 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 coup and the takeover, we've been quite on the up and up over here in the kernel. Um, all these people on TikTok. Can I just say it right now? We got a lot of haters on TikTok. People are we were talking trash. Guess what? You're wrong. I was right. I actually overestimated this movie. I said it was going to be a 45 percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Guess what? It's sitting at a 38 percent right now. Um, um, and, and you know what? We got to say Tom Holland's having a bad year because this one, 38 percent chaos walking, uh, 2021. That's a 22 percent. So Tom Holland, yikes. You know, I, I, I originally had said I wanted you for tenant three. I'm not so sure that's the case anymore there, buddy. You know, this is a bad year for Tom. It's a bad year. Um, I think I'm gonna have to re revoke that casting idea. I think I'm gonna, I'm publicly revoking that casting idea of Tom Holland and tenant three. Okay. Um, hey, buddy, have fun playing Spider Man for the rest of your life. Okay. That's tough. That is a tough break right there. Um, phew, is what it is. But cherry to our TikTokers out there. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And when you're right, you're Noah. Moving on. Billy Eilish, the world's a little blurry 2021. I really could relate to her. It was fantastic. It was very good. Um, you know, I'm also a, a successful creative person, and I, I kind of get that everyday struggle of being a, a world-renowned celebrity. So I get that. And you know what I think stood out to me the most from about watching this documentary? Self-made. She's absolutely self-made, which is... Excuse me, what's that? She's not self-made. I could I could have sworn she was... Her parents are in the... So she's just another rich kid inheriting. Pretty much. Oh, you're. She Jeff Bezos me. She Jeff Bezos. Are you telling me now that she got a three hundred thousand dollar loan? Billy, is this true? It wasn't just you and your brother making beats in the garage. Billy. Oh, what the heck, Billy? I went out on a, I went out on a limb for you. I said your garbage documentary was good. Oh, da Billy Eilish, God damn it! I'm gonna burn all of your records. Okay, I'm gonna buy the vinyl versions and I'm going out into the forest and I'm lighting them on fire. And I live in California, Billy, so that's a damn risk. All right. You serious? She really has connections, Billy Eilish. For shame, madam. Okay, and moving into our final section here, this is our Did You Know section. So if you don't know, our Did You Know section is a, it's a deep dive into film knowledge and trivia that won't be found on IMDb, all right? So, did you know Bruce Willis is dead? I, I mean, he's been dead. We're all seeing him as a spirit. M. Night Shyamalan executed Bruce Willis at the end of filming The Sixth Sense in 1999 to create what is now a 22-year-long Shyamalan twist. Pretty amazing stuff. All right, as always, I'm your host, Noah Norton. Please go check us out on Instagram, uh, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're watching, and have a great day.